So we come to the eighth move uh, based on the eight brocades. Um, this this first part of three forms stuck together. We got eight an eight form based on the eight brocades. The movements, just the movements from the eight brocades, and then an eighteen form Qigong sequence and a nine Himalayan Qigong form at the end. Thirty five moves in all. This is like the eighth move of the eight brocades, the moves that are based on the eight brocades. The reason I say the moves based on the eight brocades is because this is just the movements of Qigong and we're just adding the Pilates, yogic and the hypnotherapy type breathing to these movements. Okay, these Qigong movements are so good we don't want to waste them. So again, it's the opposite of the normal traditional Qigong where you're going through the meridians, the electromagnetic rivers. We're not doing that. Okay. And the organs, the benefit and etc. We're not doing that. We're just going straight into these movements just so you can feel the effects. So I'm going to spend a lot more time on the actual breathing. Nature is all not mine, just to find our balance before we start. So with this. Um, it's called, this move is called, it's the last of the eight brocades, it's called Shake the Back Seven Times to Eliminate the Hundred Illnesses, the boy being. Again, it's just movement at the end of the day, and we're just going to add these Pilates and Yogic and Hypnotherapy breathing to these motions. Okay, so with that, let's start with the breathing right now. So we're going to zip up pelvic floor, scoop out your abdominals, take your navels towards the spine. Okay, and as you do that, so I'm just moving for a minute. As you do that, you're going to feel the breath naturally go into them lower lobes, the lungs, the intercostals, the ribs, anywhere but the stomach. Because there's nowhere else for the breath to go apart from into these lower lobes of lungs, intercostals, the ribs, anywhere but the stomach. Okay, so just feel that. Okay, and as you feel that, if you want to further feel that, just get these two middle fingers touching underneath the xiphoid process, the sternum, hands on the lower lobes of lungs, shoulders down. And as you're right now still zipping up pelvic floor, scooping out your abdominals, you'll feel that breath coming low and deep to these lower lobes of lungs, the intercostals, the ribs, anywhere but the stomach. So much though, so you might feel these two middle fingers slightly parting and coming back to touch each other. Just adding width to the lungs as you breathe in, as you're still zipping up pelvic floor, scooping out your abdominals and exhaling through pursed lips, as if you're sort of blowing out a candle through pursed lips. As you do that right now, you'll naturally feel that breath Coming low and deep to them lower lobes of lungs. And you can take them hands away and just be safe in the knowledge that's happening because as you right now, as you are right now, zipping up pelvic floor, scooping out your abdominals, there's nowhere else for the breath to go apart from into them lower lobes of lungs, the intercostals, the ribs, anywhere but the stomach. So we can use the pelvic floor and the corset muscle, three layers deep, the transverse abdominus in the most efficient manner, helping us breathe anywhere but the belly button, helping us breathe into these lower lobes of lungs, these fish gills, 3D style, organ deep, cell deep, even bone marrow deep, into these lower lobes of lungs, intercostals, the ribs, anywhere but the stomach. Lovely. Even imagine someone's opening an umbrella inside your rib cage and letting go, or someone's just pushing out from inside your ribs and letting go. As you follow the journey all the way in through the nose and exhale through pursed lips. So you're still blowing out that candle through pursed lips. That's gonna work like a cough or a sneeze. It's gonna naturally help you zip up pelvic floor and scoop out your abdominals without even trying or try not to try. It's like a cough or a sneeze. <laughs> Everything comes in towards the spine to protect the spine in that Pilates way. So that's fine. That's lateral thoracic breathing. You can do that. Okay. But again, as we change it and go down more that yogic path, we close the mouth. 
and going in out through the nose as you're still zipping up pelvic floor and scooping out your abdominals and take the navels towards the spine. That'll slightly go down the yogic path of the breath. The smaller filter through the nose will help us lengthen the whole wheel cycle of the breath. The whole wheel cycle of the breath is lengthened. Okay, and just simply allow that to happen. And as you do that, you'll naturally feel the out breath wants to fall longer than the in breath. So simply allow that to happen. And then consciously take your mind to that out breath and quadruple it, double it, triple it, whatever you like, the out breath. Just make it longer than the in breath. This is similar to 7-11 breathing in hypnotherapy, not that we're counting. Just making the out breath right now longer than the in breath, encouraging them restful relaxation responses and endless streams of comfort. Lovely. The in breath's conscious thought, the out breath's subconscious thought. So as you elongate the out breath longer than the in breath, simply allowing that simplicity to relax the mind. As you do that, you'll benefit the parasympathetic nervous system. All the things you don't think about, the housekeeping properties of the body, will be benefited by lengthening that out breath longer than the in breath. Organ function, cellular communication, that natural state of well-being, rest, and the natural renewal of the body, which happens for our everyday life, is being benefited by simply allowing that out breath to go longer than the in breath, within your limits, not forcing anything, as you're still zipping up pelvic floor, scooping out your abdominals, keeping them Pilates principles, breathing out through the nose while elongating the out breath, longer than the in-breath. So you can stick with that, or gonna go slightly more advanced on the yogic path there with the breath. And if you can get it, that's great. If you can't, don't worry, just carry on breathing as you are. Just being aware of the sound of the breath, the feel of the breath as you're doing that right now, as it weaves that tapestry of relaxation and every single organ cell, sinew the body at will, allowing that to manifest that relaxation and every single organ Sell, sinew the body at will, allowing them restful relaxation responses and endless streams of comfort. Lovely. So as you do that right now, simply, if you want to go down the more yogic path, and you can do it, we go to Ujjayi breath, victorious breath in Sanskrit. It's seashore breathing. So again, all we do is grip at the esophagus, we narrow the esophagus, make a smaller filter for the esophagus, make a sign whistling, silky, raspy sound for the back of the throat, near, near enough sort of Darth Vader breath. Sounds like this, we're breathing in. Keep these shoulders down. And we're going, ah, with a mouth shut. Sign whistling, silky ujjayi breath, seashore breathing, gives the mind something extra to hear and focus upon. It's real focusing breath as you breathe in for the nose. And exhale. That lovely ujjayi breath. You can't get that, don't worry. Carry on breathing as you are, with ujjayi breath or not. Still zipping up pelvic floor, scooping out your abdominals, in and out through the nose, and elongating the out breath longer than the in breath. Either with Ujjayi breath or not. If you got that Ujjayi breath, very similar-ish, apart from a few slight details to Ashtanga yoga breathing. Okay, again, this helps us build the heat even more, helps us fan the fire to burn all the toxins in the body. Okay, helps us build the heat in the body, Helps us fan the fire to burn all the toxins in the body. That ujjayi breath, victorious breath. Helps stimulate the thyroid gland, which helps with weight control, etc. Helps us build the heat in the body. Lovely. So again, with ujjayi breath or not, we're going to go to vinyasa, breath synchronized movement. Now again, 
I've added modifications in this. There's a bit of extension back here. Again, if you've got any real problems with the back, don't even go there. Again, just come up to here. Again, hands. In the actual traditional form, you come back here. I'm gonna add a modification in. If you don't need this, it's great. Just put the hands on the kidneys. But again, it's sort of like a Mackenzie's back extension there. But again, optional. Again, if you don't wanna come back far, exploit the range, do a smaller range. Don't do it at all, especially if you've got slip discs, stuff like that, don't even go there. Gather in, zip up and hollow, throw that corset on, support the spine especially, okay? Or you can just leave this part out. So a lot of extension, then we hop on the heels, and we exhale down like Uttanasana style. A bit of flexion in the spine, breathing coming up. Again, we exhale and roll down again. Now again, exploit the range. Make as unique to you with the modifications we're gonna give. If you've got any problems with the back, and, you, and you've got a bit of problem with flexion, you can widen the feet and not flex the spine so far. Um, and also, you know, if you don't want to extend the back here especially, don't even go there, or just do a little motion. Okay, again, feet together will be harder, feet slightly parted would be easier. Knees are softer, would be easier. Legs straight but not locked though, just shy of locking out, would be harder. Okay, so see what suits you. Okay, again, exploit that, make this unique to you. Remember, it's your union of your mind and body. And again, we're gonna elongate the out breath long. Okay, so make that motion long. So I'm gonna go back and demonstrate. Okay, so again, support the back. Here, breathing in. We're gonna hop on the heels. Exhale down. Feet together or not. Exhaling down. Breathing coming up sharper. Here, and exhale. Long on this out breath part coming down. Collapsing inwards, dying off, thinking tiny waist. And then breathing, come up sharper. And exhale down. Now again, this part, they come right back in a traditional form. I would add some modifications. Spread the fingers, hands around the small of the back. Coming back here, it's going to stretch the abs. Again, gathering here for support. But again, if you've got any back problems, don't even go there. It's not even worth this part. Just do the flexion and extension. Leave this part out. Okay. Otherwise, go back a little bit. But again, I would be very specific on this part. Okay. Come back here first before the hop on the hills. Okay. Any back problems, you won't want to be going hopping on the hills back here. So breathe in here. Come back. Exhale down. Breathing, coming back up. Again, if you want to go down just a little bit, then do that. Feet separated and make it even easier on the lumbar region of the spine. Okay, breathing, coming up. Hands on the back. And again, come back to here first. And exhale, really find that exhale, but go long on the way down. In a sort of uttanasana. Breathing with the spine, that primal pattern of the body. And exhale, find that exhale. Just gather in, but don't do the hop back here. I'll be quite specific on that. I just added these modifications because not always within the traditional forms, not slating them or anything, um, they haven't always got these modifications, which I'm adding in. Okay, so feet together, okay, will make it harder. Feet apart will make it easier. The more softer the knees, but don't let, let the knees go past the toes. Keep that Iyengar yoga principle of alignment will be easy on the lumbar region and the spine. Again, if you're not too sure about this, leave this extension part out. But as you come back here, come back straight and then fire that exhale. Basic flexion and extension, we're playing with that. Okay, but again, in the traditional forms, it shakes up the sediment of the chi, etc. Uh, but again, we're not going into that. So again, we open up the next form, 18 form Qigong sequence, be Tai Chi beginning and then another 18 forms. But that was the last of the eight brocade type moves linked to motion. Bang. That's eight of the whole 35, three forms put together, bang.